Fun Spot Orlando is one of the few true amusement parks in Florida. In a state dominated by highly themed parks, Fun Spot offers a cheaper alternative. Fun Spot cannot compete with those larger parks, and it's not trying to. Fun Spot complements those parks, and I think it's the perfect nightcap while in Orlando. Find out why in this review. This park opened back in 1979's Fun and Wheels, just off I Drive, with the usual family entertainment offerings, which included go karts, bumper boats, and mini golf. But they moved to their current location, reopened as Fun Spot Action Park in 1997. This 4.7 acre park cost nearly $4 million to build. The park was known for their multi level go kart tracks, but they transformed into a more traditional amusement park over the past decade. In 2010, Fun Spot purchased an additional 10 acres of land, tripling the size of the park. In 2013, the park spent a whopping $25 million and rebranded themselves as Fun Spot America Theme Park. The park added three different roller coasters, including the White Lightning Wood Coaster from GCI. They also added the world's second tallest sky coaster and a bevy of flat rides. This was an incredibly bold move for an FEC, but it paid off. Fun Spot Kissimmee is located 20 minutes away, and that park underwent a similar evolution after the success of the Orlando property. This park now features four different roller coasters, including the Inverting Wood Coaster and Mind Blower. Then in 2017, Fun Spot purchased a third park in Atlanta. Fun Spot Atlanta already had a solid mix of rides and go-kart tracks, but for 2022, they're opening the largest coaster in the chain in a brand new RMC Hybrid in Airy Force One. These large investments at their other properties likely would not have happened had it not paid dividends at the Orlando Park. Fun Spot Orlando has free parking and free admission. Once inside, you can either choose to pay per ride or purchase an all-day wristband. Smaller rides cost $5 and larger rides cost $10. Then the Giant Sky Coaster costs as little as $10 if you have a season pass, but up to $40 if you just pay per ride. Pay per ride is the best option if you only want to ride one or two attractions, but I always go with the wristband because I want to ride quite a few things. An all-day wristband costs $50 to $55 as of 2022. That is pretty pricey compared to other markets, but there are two things to consider. One, you are in Orlando. This is actually the cheapest park in town. Two, it includes unlimited go-karts. and most parks, these are extra upcharge attractions. I know there are evening specials for considerably less as well, but I typically visit with a season pass so I can stop into all their parks for an hour or two after a day at the Orlando parks. I've been to both Florida Fun Spot parks roughly a dozen times, but I've only been there during the daylight hours once. The primary reason is the park's hours. Fun Spot Orlando has some of the longest hours in the industry. The park is open 365 days per year and regularly open from 10 a.m. until midnight. It's impressive they can staff the park as well as they do considering those hours. Part of that is because they often use rotating ride operators for the smaller flat rides on quieter days. I don't mind because the operators are fairly attentive. If you stand by an attraction, there's a good chance an operator will come by pretty quickly. Most rides will be open daily. Because they are open year-round, rides will inevitably close for refurbishments and points. Unfortunately, they do not post this calendar in advance so you can't plan ahead if something like White Lightning will be down. Lines are rarely an issue here. The coasters are usually walk-ons. The longest wait I've ever seen here for a coaster was 15 minutes for White Lightning on a Saturday night on a holiday weekend. The go-karts usually take longer to board due to their lower throughputs and long cycle time. These lines can often take closer to 15 to 30 minutes unless the park is totally dead. Then the flat rides are usually complete walk-ons most days. Fun Spot Orlando doesn't really have any theming. However, the park does look okay. Parts of the park feel like a carnival, particularly as you pass the portable food trailers and the smaller rides. But they do seem to try between the small pond and the general look of each attraction. Most rides have fresh coats of paint and many have flashing lighting packages at night. I particularly love the rainbow chaser lights and white lightning. Moving on to that ride lineup, Fun Spot Orlando features a trio of roller coasters. The signature rides undoubtedly White Lightning. This great coaster's international creation follows an out and back layout along the perimeter of the park. I have an entire review in this coaster, but the ride holds its speed well start to finish, 
and there are nearly a dozen airtime moments, some of which are particularly good in that back row. The ride got a little bumpy during my late 2018 rides, but the ride is running quite well now thanks to some recent track work, including a small section of all steel Titan track. Freedom Flyer is a solid family coaster. This Vacoma suspended coaster is a nice placement above the midway. The ride experience is fairly mild, but the final helix has some decent force to it. Then the overall experience is quite comfortable thanks to the open restraints. There is some shuffling on the first few valleys, but it doesn't result in any real discomfort for me. Sea Serpent is the Miler Kitty Coaster. Adults can ride this without a child if they want the credit, but the ride is primarily for those younger guests. Sea Serpent is part Kid Spot, a small kitty section in the center of the park. In general, this park has quite a bit for small kids to do, especially because they can also tag along with adults on the go-karts. Speaking of go-karts, Fun Spot Orlando has four different tracks. Three of them are multi-level. Conquest is my favorite of the three because of the sizable drop midway through the track. It's fun rumbling down descent that big in a go-kart. Commander is a long and involved track with a good mix of turns, plus a fun drop at the end. Quad Helix is a step down from the other two because the layout is simpler with a seemingly endless series of spirals. The final go-kart track is Thrasher. This one requires the most skill because the course features some super tight turns. It is exceedingly easy to wipe out and spin out if you're not careful. For flat rides, you have an intriguing mix. Fun Spot Orlando relocate a bunch of classic flat rides while filling in the gaps with some newer ones. There are four in particular I want to call out. First is Hot Seat. This is an SNS scream and swing that travels over the midway, giving some fun floater airtime. It does have a really short cycle, but with this park's crowds, you can just hop right back in line. Second is Head Rush 360. This SPF inverting frisbee moves super slowly, but it offers tons of hang time over the top, so it's a sneakily nauseating attraction despite its size. Third is Liberty Swing. This ARM Starflyer not only is one of the park's tallest attractions, but it also features unique flying cars along with the standard seats to offer a more thrilling take on a familiar flat. This position accentuates the height. Fourth is Sky Coaster. I don't usually ride this here because there's the even taller one down the road at the Kissimmee Park, but this is the second tallest one in the world, so I would suggest doing it if you aren't visiting the Kissimmee location. The free fall at the start is incredible in that flying position, and it beats most drop towers. If you want any water or dark rides, you won't find much here outside of a small set of bumper boats and a basic fun house. The final attraction note is Gator Spot, which is a small walkthrough past some pools with alligators. Just note this attraction has slightly different hours than the rest of the park if it's a priority for you. In my most recent visit, it seemed to close an hour early. For food, this park is one surprisingly good option. The diner beneath the Sky Coaster is better food than you may expect, and it's reasonably priced too. I had a nice burger there a few years ago. So do I recommend Fun Spot Orlando? I think this is a must for any amusement park fan while in Orlando. While it can match the overall experience of the larger parks, you can easily pop in for an hour or two after the other ones close to get several laps on White Lightning, and try a few other attractions as well because lines are so minimal most days. This is the perfect way to end our day in Orlando in my opinion. I think this park is a must if you love go-karts though, because of the abundance of multi-level tracks. For the longest time, I had a slight preference for the Kissimmee Park, but due to how rough Mind Blower is riding this year, I now prefer the Orlando property. So those are my thoughts on Fun Spot Orlando. What are your thoughts on this amusement park? Do you agree this is a nice way to end your day in Orlando? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.